Welcome to this series where I am teaching Python specifically for actuaries. This is the second video. In the first video, I just explained about analytics and also how to install Anaconda and reach this screen, which is the Jupyter Notebook. So if you have not seen that video, the link is in the description below and you can watch it there. So today, what we will cover is we will be covering the variable assignment the math operations and how the precedence works in Python. So all I'll be covering is only the most useful things which you need, because if I go into the details, that would be very, very long videos and I don't want to do that. So therefore we will be learning only the most important things. So let's start. So once you open Jupyter, you will open a blank notebook. Here you will be seeing input and there'll be no number in between. It will be a blank. So once you start putting inputs and then running the commands, these numbers start to fill. So therefore, this is what you will see. So let's start with the variable assignment. First of all, let us define a variable called fire claims and let's assign an integer to it. So we'll uh, do a fire claims. So this equal to will assign a number to fire claims. And here we are assigning an integer. So integer basically is a whole number without any decimals. It could be positive or negative. Let's say our fire claims were $10,000. So I have assigned 10,000. Now I have written fire claims equal to 10,000. Now how do I run it? Either you can go to this and click on run or you can click on sell and you can click run cells. If you want to run all, you can run everything. But basically what I usually prefer is I will enter control key on your keyboard and the enter key with it. So once you press control enter, it will run the command. And you see here you will get input one. So my number was 61. Let's say again, put an input. So you see this number keeps on changing. So once you get a number here, it means your command has been executed. So now what we have done is we have defined a variable with the name fire claims and we have assigned the value 10,000 to it. So let's just do it. You will do nothing. Just you will write the variable fire claims and press control enter and you will see your output here. So you see, this is how you assign a number to a variable and then you view it. So that's just the very basic starting point. Now let, let's get to the next step. We'll define a variable called flood claims and assign a number, this time we'll assign float to it. So float are basically real number with decimal points. So basically let's say our uh, flood claims were 20,000. This is an integer, point three. This makes it float, control enter. This runs the command. Let's view what the number is. Once we see flood claims, we'll see these are 20,000 point three. Now let's say that there are new claims in for flood and the number increased to let's say 40,000. So now flood claims is 40,000.5, let's say. Now we have already defined flood claims to be 20,000.3. And now we are assigning flood claims to be 40,000.5. So if you assign a lot of flood claims, what it will do is it will pick up the latest number. It will pick the latest assigned number which you have done to the flood claims. Now, if you look at the value of it, you will see that flood claims is nothing but 40,000.5. So, so you can keep on overwriting the numbers again and again, but the Python will pick up the latest number, the latest variable which you have defined. It will pick that number as the value assigned to that variable. Now let's say you have defined a lot of numbers and you quickly want to check its type. Now we'll quickly say type of, let's first check fire claims. So once you check the type of fire claims, so it's uh, Python is case sensitive. So if I did FI claims, it will say that, okay, there's a name error. So be sure that your numbers are in proper cases because Python is case sensitive. So when I say type fire claim, that tell me that fire claims is an integer number. Same way, when I get the type of 
flood claims it tells me that my flood claims are of float type so this is the very basic of how you can assign a variable and then how you can check the type of the variable so very quickly we'll do two challenges so what you'll do is once you pause the video out here and then you try to guess what the answer would be and then we will verify the answer so you can pause the video and try to find out the answer and then continue it let's move to our first challenge where it says that there is a variable called windstorm claims and we have assigned three values so first we assign 10000 15000 and 20000 what do you think the answer will generate so as i told you the answer will generate the latest number so when windshear claims value would be the latest number we have assigned to it which is basically 20000 so when i click on windshear claims oh i didn't define windshear claims so first let's say we define windshear claims then control enter so you see that the latest number which windshear claims has is 20000 so therefore, whatever you assign the latest will be the latest number. Now, if you want to move downside the code, you just press Alt Enter. If you want to execute the code and then move to next line, you press Alt key plus Enter. So it executes the code and makes a new line. But I usually prefer Control Enter. So that's the first basic concept which we did. Now let's move to the second basic concept. Again, you can pause the video and try to figure out an answer and then you can see whether your answer is correct or not. So we define peril claims at 15,000 and then we define peril claims at 15,000.5. Now, what will be the type of peril claims? So as I again told you, it will pick up the latest number as its value and the type of the latest number is a float. So therefore it should be a float. Yes, it's a float. So basically that's how your variables work in Python, whichever variable you assign and whatever value you assign to the variable, it will pick up the latest value and its latest type. That's how your variables work. Now let's move to math operations. Now before we do math operations, you might be thinking that, okay, fine, this video is all about basics of variables, but once we'll be doing practical stuff, once we will have real world scenarios, where would these numbers help? How would this help me? This is the building block of Python. You write any complicated code, you will have to use this. You will have to use these basic commands. So once I do math operations, I'll show you a different, uh, I'll show you a real life sample also as well, where you use it. And then you will see how important actually it is to understand these small nitty gritties of it. So let's start with our first operation. Now what we will do is we will define a variable called fire count. So this is count of the number of claims relating to fire. And we will say that it is five, which means we have received five claims related to fire. Now let's assume we have another claim and now we want six claims instead of five. So now we want to increase its number. So you can either write fire count is equal to fire count plus one, which I do not prefer. So what I will always suggest is you write fire count. You write fire count plus equal to one. So this basically means nothing, but fire count is nothing, but this is equal to fire count plus one. So you increase the count of your claims by one. And once you run the fire count, it will show you that you have six counts. So that's how you, you do it. So I'm telling you this because once you run a for loop later on, you won't write I equal to I plus one that that makes your code a bit messy and it, it, it makes it longer. So I usually prefer writing I plus equal to one. So therefore, once you want to increase something by one, you just write as plus equal to that's how your maths operation basically work. Now let's do two other quick examples. Now let's say our average claim amounts is 25,000, our average claims amount is 25,000. And we currently have a uh, fire total count of the claims as five. Now, what is the total? So 
what basically we'll find is our total equal to nothing but average into count and then we will see what our total is so our total is nothing but average multiplied by count which is 125000 or 125000 whatever you want to say so that's how basic math operation would work same way let's do this very one quick example let's say we have total money as 20000 usd we want to allocate 20000 usd in different department every department needs 4000 each now we'll say the un number of units is nothing but the total divided by need and then we'll check what are our units so basically five units so that's how basic math operation works now even when you write a very complex code so for example once I, while i was calculating ibnr for the numbers and i was writing the code then you can see in this code i use a for loop to subplot a number so i defined a variable called subplot a function called subplot so in the subplot function i wrote down the lines of code to finally find out that how to increase the years basically the lag years or development years so here i've used for loop and i plus equal to 1 so these are very small things which you will use and what this plot data is is nothing basically it's just plotted here on your development of it so what i'm trying to say here is that these basics you might think that why are we learning it but once you start writing a code once you start writing your own function this will be very 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 helpful now let's come to the last part of it now before that you can try to use the challenge 3 so pause the video try to do it and let's do it so in january the fire claims were 10000 in february the fire claims were 12000 and let's try to find out what is our increased percentage in the in percentage terms what, how did they increase within one year so this will be nothing but fire feb divided by fire gen minus one and once we see what is our increase control plus enter and then we will see it's roughly 20 percent increase so therefore parenthesis is so these brackets which are parenthesis parenthesis has the highest precedence in any command so you write random numbers the precedence will be given to your parenthesis first thing to be evaluated will be your argument in the parenthesis so that's his increment and after the parenthesis it is followed by exponentiation which is raised to power something and how you write exponentiation is by two double stars two asterisk symbols it means raised to the power now all the functions in Python, they are executed from left to right. But when you talk about exponentiation, it starts from right to left. So for example, it's two raised to the power two raised to the power three. Once I execute it, it gives me 256. So what it's doing is it's basically taking the right argument first, which is in the parenthesis. And now we'll see, we'll get the same result, which is 256. But if you want to force the result, I told you parenthesis has the highest precedence. You can put parenthesis and it gives you 64. So that's how the precedence work. It's parenthesis first and then exponentiation. If there are no parenthesis, then exponentiation from right to left. And this is the only exception. Otherwise, it will be from left to right. Uh, right. So parenthesis followed by your exponentiation which is followed by multiplication and division so there is no uh, no precedence of multiplication and division it's like parenthesis then your uh, exponentiation then multiplication division and then addition subtraction so these are the four levels now if we have let's say uh, we are trying to execute 2 multiplied by 3 minus 1 so 2 multiply 3 minus 1 so the first precedence is to multiplication and then to subtraction in the level of precedence. So two into three, six, 
six minus one, five. So we will have our number as five. Now let's say we do uh, five minus two into two. Again, two into two, four. So this will get executed first in precedence. Five minus four. This will give you one. Now let's try six minus three plus two. Now you see that these are have the same precedence. So minus and uh, addition and subtraction both have the same precedence. So it will start from left to right because there is no higher priority. So six minus three is three. Three plus two is five. So it first this six minus three and then it adds. Now same way multiplication and division has same precedence. So if you see six multiplied by two divided by four. Now because they have same precedence, it will first multiply and then divide. So from left to right, six into two twelve divided by four. Three, so twelve divided by four, three. But if I do six by two, multiply by four, again same precedence. So left to right, six by two, three, three into four, twelve. So, but if it was exponentiation, it would have started from the right and then to left. So that's how it works. So I hope these three concepts are very clear to you. So we are done with our variable assignments, our mathematical operations, and how the precedence works. In the next video, we will move to the print functions, get functions, and various data types. So once we are done with these basics, then we can move to libraries like NumPy and other libraries, Seaborn, Matplotlib, or other libraries which will be useful. But this is the very basic, and I hope you like this video. If you want more such type of content, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video.